Ya. Ya. Oke. Hi Rabia. Hi Andrea. Thank you for coming on my podcast. I'm really happy to have you here. It's good to be here. Thank you for having me. I was hoping that you could give us a brief introduction of where you're from, where you're living now and how that came about. Sure, yeah. So uh, my name is Rabia Hassan. I was born and raised in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. So that's the capital city of Ethiopia. Finished high school there and um, essentially had gone to a private American school growing up and um, had always wanted to venture off and come to either the U.S. or Canada or somewhere in the Western world. Even Australia was one of those options for me. Um, for college, I've always wanted to like leave home and have that experience of having um, college experience abroad. And so um, applied uh, right after high school and got accepted to a few places. The one that made the most sense for me was uh, the Midwest in Minnesota. And so made that decision and um, was able to get a visa and come here. And that's essentially my journey to the U.S. And then since then, I've just essentially lived here, but travel back home as often as I can. So how long have you been living in Minnesota then altogether? Um, so good question. So I four years of college in Minnesota, and then um, I had traveled to the Midwest for a bit and then came back. I mean, traveled outside of the Midwest to the East Coast and then came back. So now it's been five years, so around nine years. Yeah. And, and it, it was nine years in Minnesota <laughs> of all places to land in the U.S. Minnesota, right. I mean, you've got some harsh winters there. <laughs> yes, I remember my first winter and I always talk about this, about it being, I just didn't expect it. Like, I remember when I went to the American Embassy and the person who was interviewing me was like, you want to go to Minnesota? Are you sure? Do you know about the winters? I was like, yeah, snow. Yes. Like, of course, like I've seen it in movies. And then I came here and in the first winter, actually, there was a snowstorm and um, they didn't cancel classes. So I remember I had a night class. And when I went into my dorm that day, it was snowing, but it wasn't that bad. And then I came out and I'm not really that tall. And the snow is all the way up to almost my hips. And I was like, um, how do I get to class? Like, I'm not because like, and then of course, like my mind is like, oh, you need an umbrella. And it's like, no, an umbrella is not helpful for you in the snow. <laughs> Quickly learned that as it like blew away. So that was like my first winter. And I just remember after that night class, I came, I came back to the dorm. And I was so, I felt so defeated. I was like, I cannot be here. I remember calling my brother and it was like, and there's an eight hour difference with Ethiopia. And I think he was sleeping or something. And I was like, I'm ready to come home. I'm like, can you buy me a ticket? Like, I don't want to be here anymore. I like can't live in snow. I don't understand it. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, it's true. It's kind of like you have to understand it. It's something that needs understanding. Right. It's true. It is. And it's like for people that have grown here, there are things that they know about how to like, like maneuver snow and navigate it. And I'm still learning like to this day, I'm still like, oh, okay. Yeah. So I should like layer and there's specific like winter coats that I should buy. I shouldn't just buy them because they look nice and their color is nice. So I'm just like finally learning, I think. <laughs> I always say that here in Spain, because I think that the winters are really cold here actually, which is strange because temperature wise it's not so cold and yeah. minnesota also has high humidity mm -hmm. as does spain but i think that what i've realized is the difference is the clothing here people right. dress to be stylish so yes. the winter clothing is still stylish whereas in minnesota it doesn't like maybe you are stylish but underneath your giant parka and, and hat there's there's no style when you leave the house it's boots a parka gloves scarves yes. maybe you can see your eyes through all of that <laughs> absolutely so practical but it's like i think ethiopia is the same where people dress to like like everyone dresses up every day it's like a thing that people do And then I think Minnesota, I've noticed, is like a like you dress for, con for for convenience and practicality. And I'm just like, that was such a shift for me. But like one winter, and I was like, yeah, I need to I need to learn how to do this better. <laughs> do you think living in Minnesota? Do you think that practicality that comes with the way people dress transfers into personality as well? Do you see 
Minnesotans or Americans as being particularly practical in personality or the way that they live? I don't know if I would use practicality. Um, I think like the way Americans live, I think in some ways is very convenient. There's like a need for convenience and instant gratification. So like, that's one of the things that I quickly learned. And like, now I feel like I've lived here long enough. Like when I travel anywhere else, I have to check myself to be like, oh, like it, this is not bad because it's not convenient right away. Right. So like that, I have to like remind myself of that. So I see a lot of like um, a life based on convenience and instant grat- gratification. Um, what, can you tell some examples of that? Just so, I mean, I, I think I know, but I would like <laughs> to hear what your examples are from, from your perspective. Yeah. So like one of the things for me that I just quickly realized is the ability to get anything in terms of shopping right away. Like you don't have to do much looking. You can either go online, go into store and get whatever it is that you need right away. And that's not the way that I used to experience things. Like you would have to shop around back home and you would have to haggle. And so there's like this whole process of that. And here it's just like anything you want to buy, if you have the money, you can get it. Mm -hmm. And so like that was like a different way of being. And then just like the convenience in terms of like how, you know, how people live like with all of the appliances at home and all of that stuff, which makes sense because people are like taking care of themselves in terms of cooking and laundry and all that stuff. So you're responsible for doing those things yourself and you don't, unless like you're super, super rich, you don't have the opportunity to have help around that. So like, that's what I mean. And I think like in general, like it's just a culture of um, instant gratification or something is not happening instantly. Like I think about like, Amazon, for example, and the fact that like you can get a package the same day, that's like insane. I can't even imagine. <laughs> like I couldn't have imagined that like, you know, before. So, yeah. yeah. And for example, in Ethiopia, that doesn't exist still. I mean, it's something that I think I also didn't grow up with in Minnesota, but I've been gone for quite a long time. So yeah. now here in Spain, we also have Amazon being delivered to the door in Ethiopia that hasn't really arrived or the land is more spread out or yeah so Amazon like doesn't exactly exist in Ethiopia and I think like it's changed now where there's like ways where delivery does happen like when I was growing up we didn't have like takeout like you had to go to a restaurant and order something to go if that's what you needed but now you know, like takeout delivery um, happens. And there's like a lot of people who do delivery on motorcycles. So like, that's another thing that um, has been happening recently. So like there's, it, there it's changed a bit in that too, where it's like needing things right away and being able to get that does happen now, but not in the same way that it is here. Like here, it's like, if things don't happen within five minutes, people get frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. Where where there it's like a special thing, you know, that you experience once in a while. I notice it there too when I when I go home. People people have buttons on their cars so that you can have the car warming up while you're still in the house. So yes. and then the cars in your garage that's connected to the house. I mean, that's unthinkable here. <laughs> and right. And even dryers. <laughs> I it was one of the things I had to get used to in Spain is we don't have clothing dryers which is so inconvenient in such a wet place I live in the north and it's really wet so your clothes if you don't have a dryer you're I mean it's hard to even get them dry fast enough so that they don't smell damp you know and in the U.S. I, I don't think I've ever met anybody that lives in a house that has a space for one or that has a washer but not a dryer That would have never been anywhere in my mind. (laughs) Yeah. So I grew up like not having a washer or a dryer. So everything was like hand washed. And then like there were lines in the house where you you would like, you know, put the clothes on there and it would dry. And there we have a rainy season in Ethiopia and it rains like every day, like twice or three times a day. And so Mm -hmm. it's like three months of that. And during that time, it would be like as kids, we would run to try and get the clothes before, you know, it started raining and then put them back up. So it was like, and that was the time when we were (laughs) off from school. So it was constantly running, rushing to that. And then also having to estimate like, oh, the, we just washed these. So it can rain on at this time, but then by the next time. So, (laughs) (laughs) but it's true. Like now I, I, I sort of like, can't imagine 
like doing that, you know, like it just, and especially here, I mean, I know like the place where I live right now, they have like a clothing line. So like in the summer, people will try and like put stuff on there, but it's not like a thing that people usually do here. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost retro. Like, look, we're hanging our clothes on the line. It's being yes. dried by the wind. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> but I will say, I feel like that makes your clothes last longer. I think yes. like, yeah, it's true. They wear they wear they wear down faster with the dryers, which yes. to a certain extent I also kind of miss because I like <laughs> that feeling of worn jeans and stuff. Yeah. So everything gets softer faster in here. My clothes stay new forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Do you like that feeling of a convenient society or I mean, I suppose you get used to it, but would you prefer to not get used to it? Would you prefer to not live in a society that's so based on instant gratification and convenience? Yeah, I think I would prefer a society that's not that into instant gratification. Um, I think there are times where it feels good and it's okay to have that. But I think like that's kind of the expectation we have around everything, right? Like I just think about even work. If you are not responding to an email within 24 hours, it's like that person feels like you're not responding to them. You know, there's like that sense of urgency, I think, comes into play with that instant gratification. Um, and I don't know, I feel like life is meant to be lived slowly and like you're supposed to appreciate the moments and there are things that can take time and like you appreciate them more because you've taken because it's taken time for, for them to come. And then I think like the essence of like patience, like how do you learn patience in in a society where like instant gratification is expectation. Yeah. And that's why, you know, there's so much frustration and anger. And I just think about my experience as being like a kid and like learning to wait for some things and like how exciting that is. And, um, and so like, I think I, I do prefer that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. What yeah. about you? Um, yeah, I guess I would say that living outside the U.S., I notice that difference when I come home, not only in the culture, but like you said, in the objects and the physical things with yeah. the garages and the things that people buy and, and kind of that impatience or anxiousness. Yeah. I think that it's kind of built in a bit to the culture right. and I feel a bit released by it. I feel calmer. In fact, people ask me a lot if I, plan to move back to the U.S. or don't I miss living yeah. there? And I think that it doesn't suit me very well. I prefer to live somewhere else because I think inevitably it would kind of crawl back into my skin and yeah. I don't want it to. I feel, I feel healthier or more sane in a society that's a little bit slower and calmer. And I'm sure everywhere in the world is getting closer to that because we all live a more convenient life than our parents did and our grandparents did. Right. But the more I can slow it down, the calmer or healthier or more sane, I think I feel. Yeah, that's, that's so true. I think when I feel that same way, when I go and visit um, and I'm there like at the most like five or six weeks at a time. And I just instantly like feel lighter and it's, it's kind of hard to explain. And sometimes I like explain it away by saying, oh, it's because I'm with family and like this feels like home and, and all of those things. But it's actually the way in which life happens there. And like there's so much I think of like living in the U.S. that makes you feel like you need to do everything. You have control over everything. Like so much of those messages are kind of given to us or like, yeah. But like back home, that's not the case where it's just like people understand like, you can't live in a vacuum. We're not meant to as humans and mm -hmm. we don't need to rush through life. And so like meals take longer and coffee is like twice a day. And it's like kind of like a ceremony and still people are able to like get what they need to live. Whereas here you feel like, Oh, if I took any more time doing this, like I won't be, I won't be able to take care of myself or I won't be able to make it to the next you know place in my life. And so, um, instantly when I'm there, I feel very much relaxed. And like, in terms of like my anxiety and all of that, that also goes away. 
And then it's interesting because then when I come back here, which maybe you feel when you come back to the U.S. too, in like a matter of a week, it's back. It's like yeah. back. All of those feelings are back. All of that. And, and, and it's just and sometimes that's like um, it's like a boomerang effect, which is just like really hard to deal with. And and yeah. I and I think especially as I'm getting older now, I'm just like, so, you know, like where does it make sense for me to live? Because like this obviously feels good you know, being there and like slowing down and doing that. But then also being here, there are things about being here that are very important to me too. And so it's like you're stuck in two places. Yeah. That was one question I was really interested or I'm really interested to ask you is, do you feel like your personality is different in both places? And and do you feel like, like it's hard to go home and be you again or find the you that takes pieces from the U.S. or the life you've had there in the U.S. and is able to incorporate it into your friends and your family and your being because it's something that's probably very difficult to convey either to your friends and family in Ethiopia or to the people surrounding you in the U.S., I suppose. Yeah, Um, exactly. I think it's so hard sometimes for me to be able to share my full self when I go home, because I think I am a different person when I am in the U.S. as opposed to when I am back home. And I think gender roles plays a huge role in that. Like when I'm back home, there's like a specific role that, you know, people expect you to play, um, within my culture. And, Um, I think it's easy for me to kind of slip into that. And I also have always felt like I have had the opportunity to leave and have had the opportunity to get an education and all of these like life experiences, which in some ways is a privilege for, you know, the people around me. And so I also don't want to come off as like the know-it-all or that person that came from the West and is telling us what to do. And so there's like, a balance but I also have realized recently like in that balance um I hold a lot of who I am back because I don't want to make people around me feel um uncomfortable in a way and so I think this time around I think was the first time like I was in Ethiopia in July and this was the first time that I felt like I could be more of myself because I just pushed myself to say okay you can't always be thinking about how other people are feeling like you know how do you want to be and it's important for me to share my life with my family there um, and like what I do here, who I am, but it's, it's definitely two different people. Cause also like my family, I left them when I was 19. Right. And so like, that's who they remember. And while I do go back, it's like, that's still who they remember. And I'm the last born in my family. And so like, there are different things with that where sometimes they will te- literally like when we're crossing the road, my mom holds my hand and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> it's mom so I grew up <laughs> yeah but also like I'm living this whole other life here like yeah. by like independently and so I think like that like they, that that stuff still hasn't quite connected for them and I don't think it will in some ways um even if I show up as myself in that way I think when I'm in the U.S. I definitely um have given myself the opportunity to explore who I am So like, that's the thing that I really appreciate about having this being here is like, you really get the opportunity to explore who you are, not based on what anyone needs you to be. Um, I mean, there's a lot of like media that influences you and all that stuff. But I think because I didn't grow up with much of that, like I don't let that impact me as much, but I've really taken the time to really explore myself and really explore like, what do I want? And, you know, what feels good for me and um, just working on my own like mental health and emotional growth and healing like this, you know, like I've had the opportunity to do that. And in some ways I never, like when I was little, I never thought that I could actually like be independent and take care of myself. And like, I've been able to do that. And then I've learned that like, 
like it's not as great like we need people (laughs) yeah (laughs) you know it's like a journey like I think when I was back in Ethiopia I was like oh I just don't want to do everything with community and I just don't want to do everything with family this is so annoying and then like I come here and it's like I'm by myself like having to do it and then and then I create you know like chosen family like I've been able to also have that here which has been so incredible I mean I've met people from all around the world and I don't think like that's one of my favorite things about the U.S. is that you just get to meet everyone from all around the world. And um, yeah, it's and then like, yeah, it's two completely different people and it's hard to kind of like have them come together. And I think I'm at a a place in my life where I'm just like, well, maybe like they don't need to be the same people and that's okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. What you said there. Well, it it kind of strikes a feeling I've also had here where or living abroad that I feel free of maybe the way culture your own culture can tend to judge you or make you feel judged even if they're not trying to because it sets certain expectations so even as a kid I remember in school there was the shoes you were supposed to wear to be cool and if you had these shoes you were not cool and if you don't know about that then there is no such thing as being cool or not cool according to your shoes because you have no idea that that rule exists so when you live abroad everyone I mean I've noticed that here in the kind of smaller town that I live in I've I've felt these rules that other people will explain to me kind of trying to help me. And there are times when I say, I don't want to know. I don't want to know what your rules are because I'm so free. I don't have to know them. I get to just be do whatever I want. Yeah. I think that's definitely true. Like there are still some things in the, in like the American culture that I still don't get. I'm like, okay, that makes no sense. And people will like explain to me what some of those things are. And, and most of the time, I just like ignore it because I just don't believe in rules. I think like values are important and like those are things that you can kind of buy into, but the rules is, yeah. And I think also, I think one of the things that I quickly, and as you were talking, kind of made me think about it was like, I quickly understood is race. Like when I came to this country, that was a completely new phenomenon for me. Like I understood race from, you know, American films and all that and all of that and like you know studying American history but I just didn't understand the impact of what race the impact of race still to this day and I definitely experienced that and you know um in college and it was very interesting because I went to school for political science and so most of the students in my classes were white men and they were also doing like a double major with criminal justice or something like that. And so like their views were very, very conservative and at times problematic. And then like I had these group of international students who were from all over the world and there was a way that we were with each other and that we loved each other. And it like didn't like race is like, I won't say like race didn't matter, but it was like something that was acknowledged and something that was like not looked at in a bad way and so like I had that and then I would come into class and have this completely different other feeling Mm. and so it was something that I quickly had to learn about unfortunately um and so that was one of the things that you know like you're like yeah there's freedom here and then there also isn't so did the way that you perceive that I mean was it just being shut out of things or was it being um, ignored or how, how was that? Yeah. What, what did that feel like for you? Yeah. So in class, it was mainly like being felt like my opinion didn't matter. Um, like I, people always assumed, um, that a, I couldn't, and this wasn't even just about race, but it was also like, Oh, you speak English. You speak such good English. This is what I always used to get. And that just, I was like, what does, what does that actually mean? You know? Um, yeah. And then in class, like literally being told, like, I have no idea what I'm talking about, um, being, you know, like comments, like microaggressions that make you feel like, you know, what you're saying, or like when you're responding to someone, they're just like, kind of like swatting you off, like, oh, you have no idea what this is kind of like those kind of feelings. Yeah. 
that must be so frustrating. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. It was because I also didn't have the context for it. Now I know what it is so I can engage in it, you know, but like when you're new, you're like, what is wrong with this guy? And then like the next guy does that. And you're like, what is wrong with this one? And then you're like, oh, what is the similarity here? And then, you know, you have a teacher in the class who like, in some ways should like notice these things and facilitate in a better way, but doesn't because they themselves are blinded by some of these things too. So yeah, I think that was really hard and it really was helpful to have other students, other international students who experienced similar things. And they were like my safe, like soft spot essentially. Yeah. I think that that's something really complicated about the United States specifically is it's, there aren't really, I mean, it's something I notice here in Europe. I live in Spain and there's all these other countries with other languages and other cultures surrounding it. And with yeah. kind of a decently priced flight, you can go mm -hmm. and live in another culture where people speak another language and you get that idea that there's all these different worlds other than the one that you know. Whereas in the U.S., I know that I, for me growing up, going to another country seemed so huge. It seemed, right. I, I remember my mom went to Jamaica once and I thought like, wow, my mom's going to Jamaica. I wish I could go to Jamaica, but not to mm -hmm. mention France or Spain or Ethiopia. So right. it's so far away for Americans. And I guess we don't really often spend time or even have this much curiosity about Canada and Mexico. So what happens is we just travel around the US and we think that's interesting. The world. Cultural. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> maybe if you do go to Europe also, then it's just a week in one place and you go back. So I think, I think the culture lacks this concept of how there's other worlds that see things in completely different ways. And, and you have to be kind of assaulted by the fact that you thought something was a fact when it's actually just a cultural thing. Right. Yeah, that's so true. I was recently talking to someone and I caught myself because I was like, oh, the world is a mess, you know? And I was just like, in my mind, I was like, actually what I meant to say was America is a mess. And so like, <laughs> You know, like, it's like that thing where you think like the America is the world, like that concept is like impounded in your mind. I think media does that a lot to us where, you know, uh, there's this thought that the U.S. is everything and it's the best at everything. And so it's just like, yes, there are many great things about here. And there's also the rest of the world that is very different and worth exploring. And that's what I always try and tell people is like, like you it, so much happens to you as a human being when you like live in a place that is different from anything that you've ever known. Like that's the best kind of learning and the best kind of growth. And so that's, that's something I always tell people, like you should at least try and live somewhere for one month, if not more. So, yeah. So you, do you think that living abroad then is healthy and beneficial? And I mean, I would say, because there are some things about it that are so hard, it right. could kind of break people. So do you think yeah. it's something that everyone could and should be able to manage? Or do you think that there are certain people you wouldn't recommend it to? Yeah, I, I don't think I would recommend it to everyone. Um, I just think of like one of my brothers and he has always said like, I like in love with Ethiopia, he never wants to leave, but he wants to travel and so like I think for people like that it's important to like travel and see different places and stay in a place for at least a month or so but to live somewhere else I think you really have to be someone who really wants that deeply and understands like what about that do you want you know um, and I think that sometimes we are not at least for me I don't think I quite understood the reality of what it meant to live somewhere else um, and I always thought to myself, oh, yeah, like when I'm done, I'm done. I'll just move on. Right. And it's like, that's not the reality of like yeah. an adult life. Like you can't just pick up and leave. You can. But like, that's quite a transition, too. And like moving to a place and living there is such a transition. Um, and it does break you at times. Like, definitely. That's 
something I've, I've experienced where I was just like, what am I doing here outside of my, you know, my community in some ways and, you know, the people that I love and it's so isolating at times too, when you think about it and um, it's hard, but I also think that it's those moments that you really grow from. Cause it really, it really makes you know yourself in such a different way. Like, I don't think I, and that's what I really wanted essentially. Like I've always, that's what I wanted living abroad was like the opportunity to really get my get to know myself because I can distract myself with so many things right but this gives you the opportunity to like know who you are and what you want and what where your values lie but I wouldn't recommend it for everyone I would say I would really recommend people travel though and not just to like you said like if you live in the U.S. going to Europe for like a week but like actually traveling go to Asia like go to Africa go to other parts of the world where things are very different from what you know them to be or I would add to that go somewhere and go slow so don't just go to the main points and look at them and go back to your hotel and fly home but yes. like walk around, stay at a cafe every day, the same cafe and have yeah. chats with the waiters and yep. get groceries and yep. yeah, kind of get sick yeah. there and see what it's like to be in a hospital <laughs> somewhere else or. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. the hard part. Being in a hospital somewhere else and you don't have anyone to call. That Has is, that happened yeah. to you? Well, like I had friends like in college. So there was this one time where I got sick and I had to go to urgent care. And, you know, like I had dorm friends, but like my actual family lives in like DC. And so I don't want to call them because it would be alarming for them. So I was just like, ah, this doesn't make sense. Like, what could they do for me anyway? I'm all the way in Mankato. Like, what what are they going <laughs> to do for me? <laughs> <laughs> Calling Ethiopia from Mankato. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, there's that doesn't make sense. So yeah. I didn't do that. But like, yeah, that that teaches you how, how strong you can be when you have to be. <laughs> and also it's it's teaches you something about your friends because it's a right. feeling I've had here too. If you're moving or there's all these things that you just know your family can help out with. Yeah. Or maybe a spouse or something like that. Yes. But when you're on your own you really have to like be brave enough to ask yeah. your friends to do things that they ask their families to do. So, right. And, That's and then so you just true. feel so grateful because you know, yeah. you, you know that normally you would ask your family to do that. So the yeah. fact that they step in and they recognize that you don't have family there and they help or they yeah. think of you, I think that's so beautiful in a way. <laughs> I agree. It is so beautiful. And that's, and I think like for me, the friendships that I've had for some time, I don't even see them as friends anymore. It's almost like they're a family yeah. or like a different type of friendship because of that reason. Cause it's like, you're really there for each other in ways or like they're there for me in ways like you, like you said that my family would be. And then I also have friends that like don't have family here too. And so we know what that feels like. And so like for holidays and stuff, like we're, we're always like, oh, how can we get together? So we don't feel, you know, like we're just here by ourselves. And so yeah. it's it's a very different way of being. And it does take, and that was like my biggest learning for me because I really struggled with asking for help. And I had some friends who were, who would, who would just say like, I, I'm coming to do this for you. And I would just be like, okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I reached to I the like, point where I can accept it. Maybe not yes, ask for it, but accept yes. it. Yes. <laughs> and then like when they did that, then I was just like, okay, then I can ask for help. Like this is a skill to learn. Like, you know, um, so then I, I started asking for help and it was, like you said, it's so beautiful. It kind of makes you emotional really. And like, yeah. and that's the thing that like, like when I talk to my mom and stuff, that's, that's the stuff that she worries about where she's just like, well, like, who's going to pick you up from the airport when you arrive? And like, who's going to do this? Like when you're sick, like when I had a cold or something, she's like, so who's going to, who's taking care of you? And I'm like, I'm fine. If I need something, I'll reach out. And it's like, they really do that for you. I was like, yeah, I have friends that will. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you think that I remember when I've heard this set, I don't know how many times, but I've heard a lot of people say to me about living here that I was brave for having moved abroad. And I always thought that was kind of a strange way to put it because I, 
I never felt brave. I never thought I'm going to do a brave thing. I don't think I was really scared. I was more excited about it. And anything right. scary that came from it kind of came later when when it wasn't really about being brave. It was just about, okay, this is my difficult thing today. How am I going to solve it? But it, do you think about moving abroad or the choices you made as being brave? I think I would say now. Yeah. I think that it's, it's very brave. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think like you, when I first like was coming here, I was so excited. I remember like I was in the airport and I was like, bye. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like people were like crying and they still make fun of me for this. I was just like, okay, okay, bye, go. Like I'm ready. Like, let me start this life. <laughs> yeah. It's and, true. And, yeah, it's just so excited because you're like, I don't know what's coming. This is like, and you're young. And also like, I was super young too. So for me, I'm like, ah, oh, freedom. Um, and then it's like the second time that I went back home, it was a different experience where they were okay. And I was crying. I was like bawling. I was like, I don't want to go. Like, so that experience. And I think that what happens to me, I don't know if this happens to you, is like, especially if there are like some moments that were super tough. And then like, when you see your family, like sometimes like that kind of plays in my mind because I'm just like, oh, now like I can break down or like, this is an opportunity for me to like decompress because I couldn't in some of those moments early on. And so, and as you're going through those tough things, I'm not thinking, oh my God, I'm so brave. I'm doing this. It's just like, oh yeah, this is tough and I got to figure it out. Like I'm going to figure it out. And then like, you know, it, it passes, but now as I'm looking back now that I'm in my thirties, I'm thinking about that 19 year old who had like no idea and stepped into this world and like everything that came after that, like every experience, um, you know, like multiple moves. Like I moved from, you know, Mankato straight to New York. I experienced New York for two years and that was rough. Then I moved to DC, like Virginia and stayed and lived there for a while. And then I moved back. So like, there's been so many experiences where I look back and I was like, wow, that is, that is kind of brave. Like totally. I just kept going. Yeah. Like I just kept going. And I think like, that's the thing that makes that, I, that I see as being brave is like not allowing those moments of challenge to completely like have that end whatever journey I was on or just saying like I'm done I quit I leave I want to leave um and I always think about like leaving the U.S. in a in a, in a way where I'm just not in a bad place where I'm like fed up I don't want to do this anymore but just in a place that's just like okay on to the next thing mm -hmm. so yeah can you tell me one thing that you think is really beautiful or nice about American culture or Americans or something that you encountered that you didn't expect or surprised you? Yeah. Um, I think like fundamentally, and I think I've said this a few times, I think they're like the American culture, maybe it might be just for people who come <laughs> and live here like myself. It really gives you an opportunity to explore yourself, who you are, what you want, what you want to learn how you want to grow. There's just so much opportunity here. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also an opportunity to be who you are, you know, <laughs> like in some ways you have to like advocate for yourself and all those things are true, but you can do that here. Like mm -hmm. there's, there's an opportunity to do that. And I think the culture allows for that. Mm -hmm. um, I also think like, I think about <laughs> some of my early days in college and I remember like being in school and like studying, like being in the library and studying, studying, setting and like I had some American friends and they were very good about having fun so like having fun like the concept of actually having fun was not really something that I like knew about like you know like or like explored but that's definitely something that I like have learned from the American culture were you able to join them and have fun did you was their form of fun fun for you <laughs> Yes. No, college was very fun. Cool. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot of like um, guilt about it because I was like, oh, my God, I'm here for like for school. Like I should be studying because it's like that's just like the way my mind thinks. But I was also able to because like I saw them having fun and different forms of fun. I was like, OK, so this is something that is acceptable to do. And how can I do that and study? So it was really an opportunity for me to learn about having fun and not feeling guilty about it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So last one. Okay. 
in the same way, is there something that you can now see about your own culture that you didn't really recognize before that makes it so like special and unique and beautiful? Yeah. Um, yes. So many things that I saw about my culture that I see as being very beautiful and unique. But one thing is just there's this fundamental belief in, in, in my culture that you live in community and with community. Like you're, you cannot, like you can do a lot by yourself and that can be okay, but anything worth having is worth shared. And so I really didn't, (laughs) did not necessarily like that growing up because I was just like, where is the privacy? Like, can I just be myself? Like, (laughs) but (laughs) I look at it now and it's just like the ways in which people take care of each other in communities is just so beautiful and they don't do it expecting um, you to reciprocate in any way. It's just a way of being and a way of living. Like if I'm eating, you're eating, you know, if I'm doing this and you're, and we're neighbors, like if I'm buying something for my children, I'm going to send some for yours, you know, like that way of existing is just so beautiful. And I think it's just so helpful in so many things. When you think about people's mental health, emotional well being, like that connectedness and belonging is just, it's so important. And it's something that I took for granted because I was just like, yeah, this is how the rest of the world is, whatever. Yeah. But if that's not the case, yeah. Do you think that you eventually or sooner rather than later, I don't know, would go back and like begin your new adult life there? Yeah, I think this last trip that I was in Ethiopia really made me consider that for many reasons I I just think about um, my parents getting older and just being like okay so I do want to spend more time with them and I think like I just like the way that I am there and so just really made me think about like you know what can I do there where I can you know financially take care of myself um but also be a part of this community you know like my siblings have kids they have kids I have nieces and nephews that like I see once in a while I'm the cool aunt that comes in with presents, but I just want to be like a constant aunt there too. Mm-hmm. Um, and just see them grow. Cause it's hard. Like you see them at three and then there's six all of a sudden and you're like, uh, it just doesn't feel good. So yeah, I'm planning on it. Um, I'm not rushing myself cause I keep on wanting to put a timeline on it. And this is, I guess my, my, you know, living in America life, just being like plan for it, timeline to up. But I just feel like <laughs> it's going to happen and it will happen soon. Hmm. Yeah. What about you? Is Spain your forever home? Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say my forever home, but I don't, I think I feel that I've created my identity more here right. than, than the one I created for myself there. I feel this one, I identify with this one more, I guess. So right. I, there are a lot of things I do miss about home and about yeah. family and about things that are more familiar to me or that I'm able to understand better or especially living in a language that I can excel at. <laughs> I, I, I still struggle with Spanish regularly and, and it would I would love to be able to communicate as in Spanish as well as I can in English. But yeah. But I like, I like the challenge of living abroad too. And I like, I kind of like being on my own in some ways. And in that way, I'm a bit American. I I've <laughs> like learned to just fend for myself so much that I don't know how to go home and let my parents <laughs> cook for me. Or I don't know, it's been, I, I, it was like more than a lifetime ago. <laughs> right. Yeah, those are the things I look forward to, like literally not having to worry about the food I'm eating or washing my laundry when I go home. So it's interesting to hear like that's not the thing that you want to experience. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do miss I do miss my family though. I miss yeah. I miss family. It's right. you know, like you just don't I, I have my Spanish family or my adopted version, but it's yeah. people that I met that don't know anything about my background really. And how much time can you spend talking about something in the past? Like you don't really want to live in the past. So you just go forward, but that just leaves a void in the friendships you make or. Yeah, that's so true. It does leave a void. I, 
I just think about like making friends at this age. And I think that that's the hardest thing is like having to recount everything and like get to this place. And then I think about the the friends that you had, you know, like that I had, like I have a friend that I've known her since we were in second grade and we're still friends. And it's like the way she knows me, no one else really does. And it's very different. Yeah. You've carried her with you all this time. She's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're out of time. So I'm going <laughs> to okay. stop before I ask any more questions. <laughs> yes. It was really great chatting with you. I, I loved hearing about your thoughts and experiences. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This was great. You made me go down memory lane. <laughs> <laughs> If we had more time, I would do it a lot longer, but we can save that for another opportunity. Absolutely. Sounds good. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you, Rabia. Bye. Bye.